Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a piece of Swift syntax that I'm pretty sure is high up most Swift developers' lists of the stuff they don't like about Swift or stuff they have to look up all the time. I'm of course talking about if case let syntax. If case let syntax is a special kind of syntax that allows us to use pattern matching to compare two values in Swift. Pattern matching is very powerful and it's used by, for example, switches to allow us to check whether a value is within a range or whether it's of a certain type or many other kinds of comparisons. The specific one that I want to take a look at for today's video is one that involves enums. Right? So we can use the if case let syntax to compare enums with associated values to whatever we have as a value. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that right now. Make sure you like the video and all of these things. If you prefer reading the contents of what we're talking about today in a blog post, look at the description down below. There's a link to my blog in there and there's a post on this specific topic there as well. So let's just jump into if case let syntax and look at some examples of how it's used, how you can use it, and hopefully make you remember the syntax this time. So if case let syntax, like I said, is commonly used for enums, and that's exactly what we're going to be looking at in this video. So let me define an enum called loading state. That's going to have a couple of different cases. One is going to be for loading something, all right? The other is going to be loaded with a string of data, right? This would probably be a model if this was an actual app, but we're using string for now. A case failed, and maybe also a case idle, right? We have a couple of different um, cases that we might be in when we use loading state. Now, what I want to do here is write a function. Um, I'll call it test. The reason I'm putting this in a function is I'm working in a Swift library, which means that I can't have top level code here. So let me start out with a base state. Let state equals loading state loaded hello. If you were to use a switch to go over this state, that switch would probably look a little bit like this. All right, case loading, you would print where loading. Case idle, right, print idle. And now if we want to look at loading, we could, or load it, we could say case loaded and then print loaded, and we could do print failed, and print that we failed. All right, this is nothing too crazy, I would say. Let's fix those syntax errors. And we have a nice switch to look at. What I'm doing here is just going over every single possible case that our enum might be in. But we're not using the associated values of our enum. And if I want to do that, I have to use case let syntax, but it's inside of a switch, so it doesn't look as weird. Right? If I want to get the loaded data, I could just put let data right here, or I could put let error right here, and that would allow me to get the associated data or the associated error, error from my enum. We can also mix this up a little bit. We could move our let to in front of the case, then becomes case let loaded with data. Uh, that's mostly useful, I think, if you have multiple associated values. I find this to be the somewhat more confusing version of case let syntax, but it works. And this user's pattern matching under the hood. Now, pattern matching in Swift is a really powerful feature that also allows us to do things like comparing whether a certain value is in a specific range. Like if we have a status code from an HTTP re request, let's say it's a 200, uh, we could actually switch over this status code and we can write case, um, maybe we want to check for 400 errors first. So if case 400, up to and including 499, uh, we can write print client error. If it's in the 500s, right, we could print server error. And if it's in the 200s, print success. Right? And then we do need a default 
and we'll just put print unknown. All right, I'm happy with that. So that's how you could actually compare a status code using switch uh, syntax and pattern matching, right? All these cases with ranges, they are patterns. So let's take a look at how we can take this switch syntax and apply it to an if statement. What we're actually allowed to do, and I'll put that code right here, is to say if case.loading equals my state. So instead of switching over state, we can compare state to case loading. And this is doing the exact same work that the switch statement would otherwise, except now we don't need to wrap this all in a switch. So that could be very useful if you're only interested in checking one case. This also works with guard, by the way. So we could replace our if with a guard, and then we'd have to put an else here and return, right? This is also fully allowed. So we can take that pattern matching syntax from switches Combine that with if or with guard, and it's the exact same thing. So that means, if you're wondering, that this is actually valid Swift code. All right? If the range 200 to 200, 299, if case that range equals status code. This works perfectly fine now. In this specific case, I would prefer to not do this and to actually write contains on my range. But you know, this is not about what we should be doing. This is about explaining caselet syntax and caselet syntax is pattern matching just like what a switch would do. So this um, is perfectly valid to do a range and then uh, case matching, but I would prefer you use contain. We can also extract associated values when we're using pattern matching and case let syntax with if statements. I could say if case dot loaded let data equals state, and then I can actually print loaded. And so that's fully allowed. I can also move that let just like I could for switches to say if case let loaded equals state. Right? This all works perfectly fine. Now, is it easy to remember this? I don't think it's easy to remember this. I think it becomes easier when you think back to switches. So when you think to yourself, how would I put this in a switch? It becomes a little bit less daunting because the weirdest part is that you don't do a double equals here, right? You don't do if case let load a double equals state. You actually do some sort of assignment here with a single equals. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case. I just know that it is the case. And I know that we have to essentially deal with that. So that is caselet syntax explained to you in a nutshell. Caselet syntax is not easy by any means. And I'm pretty sure that if you found this video because you were looking for how to do caselet syntax, um, we'll probably meet again, right? It's not intuitive. It's not easy. It's not something that you use frequently. Right? in practice, I don't use caselet syntax in my code a lot. Um, but when I do, it is nice to remember what it's like. It's nice to remember how it works. And I always think back to how would I put this into a switch? And then the if case kind of becomes somewhat natural. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure to change that right now. Make sure to like it. Make sure to do everything you can to please the algorithm because that makes me happy too. And we all just end up being a happy bunch together. If you prefer reading uh, the contents of this video in a blog post, the link is in the description down below, as I said, and I will see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching.